here we are. I've found a suitable anchor point. It's a tree. It's not an engineered anchor, it's, and it's not exactly a structural anchor. It's more of an environmental anchor. But we're going to attach to a tree on the other side of our fake little house here. Now, normally, I'd have to get this thing up a lot higher to get it over, but I'm going to show you some of the basic technique. Now, again, I want to use that butterfly fold. I don't want to coil this up. I want to just back and forth with no twists and just enough rope to get myself over the ridge of the roof. Then I want to make sure that I give it a good clean toss and get it, boom, right up over top of the roof. There we go. And it unfolded as it went, no twists and kinks in the rope. Now let's head over to the other side and inspect our anchor point and learn one more knot. Okay, so here we are. We have a good stout tree, one with a plenty of support in the root system, so if I fall, it's going to hold me. Not a giant tree, but certainly stout enough to serve the purpose that we need. Now, what I want to do is I want to wrap this properly around the trunk of the tree about three times. So I need to go around three circumferences of the tree. I'm going to eyeball that. Looking over here, it's a lot fatter this way than it is that way. I'm calling this about a two foot diameter right over here across this dimension. So I want to take two feet times the di I, mean, I want to take that two foot diameter times pi. Because circumference is pi times d, pi times diameter. Remember pi is 3.14159265365 to 10 decimal places. But we don't want to do the math that way. So we're just going to round it off to three and say two times three or approximately a six foot circumference on this thing. That might even be a little high, maybe it's a little less than two feet. We'll call it, yeah, let's call it six. And I want to go three times around, so three times six would be 18. So using grandma's method for measuring cordage, she said it's about three feet from the end of your hand to your nose. So there's three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen feet right there. So I've got about 18 feet. That should go around there three times well. So I'm going to come and I'm going to park this right up against the side of the tree. And I'm going to start to wrap. Now the purpose for the tensionless hitch is to both give me a good anchor and to minimize damage to the rope. So as I'm coming around, I want to make sure I lay this snug and parallel to the rope right there. So coming around like this, I want to keep this parallel like that as I come around for my third wrap. Get that up above the parallel. Coming around for the third time. And it uh, looks like it was closer to a foot and a half than, than to two feet because I have a little bit of extra here. Um, probably not going to be able to get around a fourth time, which would be okay if I could. Oh, you know what? I can get around a fourth time. Watch this. Three to four is a good number of times around. Now that I'm around, we're going to take our carabiner out of our pocket, hook our carabiner into our figure eight on a bike, roll it over, grab our line like this, open it, open up the carabiner, and just hook that over the line like this so it slides. So I'm now hooked over the line so it slides. I pull it out this way. There is a tensionless hitch. I'm tied to the tree, I have a suitable anchor point, and I am good to go to hook my rope grab up to this on the roof with my fall arrest device onto the rope grab and up to my dorsal D-ring. Tensionless hitch around the tree. Let's look at another one in just a second. We are back on the other side of the roof needing an anchor point. We need some solid anchorage to tie our lifeline off to. We've gone over the top of the roof and over on the other side is where we're working. If we don't have a tree, we can use our truck. 
or some other vehicle that's stout and heavy, preferably something even with a tow package on it. When you're using a vehicle, you want to make sure it's in park, you want to make sure it's turned off, you want to make sure the parking brake is set so that it's going to be definitely locked in place. You may also want to take rocks or bricks or a hunk of something to chock the wheels so that it can't roll back. Make sure the vehicle is very secure. Then we want to tie to something that's very stout. One thing we can always tie to is the rear axle. Now, if we're going to tie to the axle or to anything out here like the, uh, uh, the safety chain clasp for the, uh, for the trailer hitch, we want to make sure we do it properly and, and load this thing well. We want to try to avoid as much as possible sharp edges. Here's one thing we don't want to do. We do not, big red circle with a line through it, we do not want to do this. That's not good. This could easily slip off. This is not a good way, this cinch type configuration, other than on that tensionless hitch, which has already got so much friction on the tree, this is not something we want to do. We want to make sure we have a good, solid, held anchor that's not going to slip off. There's something we can use to help us with that, and it's called an anchor strap. These are made and tested, sewn extremely well with high strength sewing threads. They're not even threads, they're more like strings. This particular anchor strap is rated for 850 pounds if just pulled straight away. In basket mode, it's rated for 1,700 pounds. Now, what does that mean, basket mode? Basket mode is when, I'm not telling you to do this, I'm just demonstrating basket mode. Basket mode is when you wrap it around something like this and you put your carabiner in both those loops on the end. In this way, this strap is rated for 1,700 pounds. That's pretty cool. That's pretty strong. But again, we wouldn't want to put it here because that could slip right off and make a problem. When they talk about vertical, they're talking about One this way, way to do this, which is absolutely not recommended. This is to put it in what's called a cinch. You make a loop and you pass that through all the way so that it kind of chokes itself there, called a cinch or a choker. This actually has less strength now. This is only rated for 800 pounds, whereas before, if we just put it around like that, it was rated for 850. So when you choke it or cinch it, you actually lose strength because of pinching on those fibers in there. Again, our preferred method is basket mode, just like that, 1,700 pounds. Now, how on this vehicle can we take advantage of the vehicle and use it for an anchor? Well, here I have some smaller anchor straps, still good and strong, plenty sufficient for our needs. I don't want to tie to this, but I do have the spot where the safety chains attach. I can put my anchor strap through there in basket mode. There's one in basket mode. I can come to the other side and put a second one through in. So here we are. We've taken our anchor straps, put them through the chain slots or chain eyes where the safety chain for a trailer would go. We have these in basket mode and because we have two of them, we have created what's called a shared anchor. Now, because there's a little bit of an angle here, the way the vectors work out, we can't double the basket mode strength, but with this very slight angle, it's pretty close to double. So we want to get our carabiner now hooked in through both of the straps for our shared basket anchor. And here we go. We now have a very suitable anchor for our um, for our lifeline. Now, I may want to ultimately do this over top of the hitch like this because we're going to be going up on an angle toward the ridge of the roof, and I want to keep as many sharp edges off of this as possible. But this would be a very suitable anchor right here. So I'm going to leave this anchor on. We're going to put a little pause. Now I'm going to go around and hook up and show you one more last thing when you're attaching to an anchor on the opposite side of the house. Okay, here we are back on the roof. 
uh, now with our nice Kern Mantle style static rope for our vertical lifeline and we are anchored over on the other side of the roof ridge to a tree. Here's a problem. As that rope moves up and down over the ridge of the roof, I'm going to wear through that rope. I've created a weak point there, so I want to use something like this. There's a lot of different styles. This is what's known as an edge protector. So what I want to do is get this thing up here on the ridge of the roof, and now as I pull on my rope and I put force and tension on my rope, so the now rope you can see with the edge protector on the roof, as I slowly descend the roof, this particular rope grab allows me to descend slowly. As I slowly descend, the edge of that rope is now protected by that edge protector and I'm not going to break my rope or abrade it on the ridge of the roof. So with that said, let's do a quick review up here on the roof. Let's talk about just two things. The primary focus of this was ropes and knots. Best rope, Kern Mantle, static rope, made from synthetic materials, 5,000 pound minimum breaking strength. The knots we used, the figure eight on a bike, properly dressed with no twists or crossovers within the knot, and a barrel knot, also known as the double overhand knot, to be used as a stopper knot in the event that we slipped, our figure eight on a bike were to slip. So those are the key knots that we learned in addition to the tensionless hitch that went around the tree parallel to itself, spiraling up three or four times, and then cinching on to the rope with our carabiner. So hopefully this was helpful to you all, and uh, you can always rewind and see the knot tying again. Good luck and be safe out there on the roof installing solar.